Right. So today we are going to talk about mainly about the concept of descending tracks. Right. But uh, before really I go into detail of descending track, I will do a little bit revision and put the ascending tracks and descending track in a proper perspective in your mind. Right. Let's do a very little revision that we have to see where the descending tracks are present. Look. How the central nervous system work? First, it, it has to collect the information, and then it has to make the decisions and responses. So, last time we discussed that information collection start from receptor point. Receptors take the energy of stimulus and convert into action potentials. Action potentials through the nerves they reach to the spinal cord. Then, from the spinal cord, these are the tracks which will take the information to the higher centers, right? and these tracks which are taking the information to the higher centers these tracks are called which tracks ascending. ascending tracks right so what we say information from the receptors going into action potential form in the neurons sensory neurons they bring the information to the spinal cord and from here as ascending tracks now these are what ascending tracks that take the information to the higher center some of these tracks take the information to cerebellum. Some of the track information eventually through multiple chain of neurons, they take the information to the sensory cortex. And all those bundle of axons which take the information, sensory information from lower level to the upper level of the central nervous system are called sensory tracks or ascending tracks. Once information reaches to higher level, then information will be processed at higher level. As I told you, if you are touching someone, is that right? And if you are feeling very good, but that person is annoyed, then what happens? You have to bring a motor response. Maybe you have to withdraw your hand in a sheepish way. Is that right? So, what will happen? The central nervous system has to make some decision. Then, from higher centers, information has to come down. Through, information has to come down. Now these neurons which bring the information to the lower level in central nervous system, right, either from the cortex or from the subcortical higher centers, when information flows down through the bundle of axons, right, these bundle of axons are called descending tracks. These bundles of axons are called descending tracks. Then descending tracks, of course, are going to produce the motor responses, maybe responses through motor movement of the muscles or there may be some autonomic descend, descending tracks which may produce a response through modifying the activity of glands or modifying the activity of the heart or modifying the activity of the smooth muscles. Is that right? So it means descending tracks are concerned with bringing the motor decisions from higher level of the central nervous system to the lower level of the central nervous system and these descending tracks can eventually produce the motor responses through skeletal muscles which are your voluntary motor responses or they bring the motor responses from autonomic nervous system which may modify the activity of the glands or the smooth muscles in GIT respiratory system and other places or modify the activity of the heart. Is that clear? Now we are going to talk about the motor responses. The how which higher, what higher centers are involved in these motor responses and eventually how they send the information down at lower level of central nervous system. Is that right? First of all, for this purpose, I will discuss about the motor cortex because motor cortex is the highest center which is concerned with generation of, yes, concerned with generation of motor activity. Voluntary motor activity. Cerebral cortex has certain areas which are called now this is suprolateral surface of the suprolateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere, right? Now, first of all, the most important landmark, again, what I'm going to discuss now, I'm going to talk about different types of motor cortex, right? Because first we have to understand what are the higher centers which are commanding the motor 
system. Then we'll see what tracks from there are coming down. And some of them are coming directly down. Some of them make a station on the way in the brainstem and then come down. Is that right? But before really I go to descending track to make a proper concept, we should see from where these tracks start. These descending tracks, the motor tracks from where they start. To really to understand the concept from where these motor tracks start, we should have a very clear concept that what is the motor cortex. Now, actually, first of all, the first landmark on uh, superlateral surface, you should understand is this sulcus. What is this sulcus? Central sulcus. Is that right? Now, motor area is in front of the interior to the central sulcus. And sensory areas are posterior to the central sulcus. So we can say central sulcus is, sulcus is a dividing line, right, uh, between the motor and the sensory areas. Is that right? That cerebral cortex anterior to that is concerned with the motor activity and posterior to that is concerned with the sensory activity. Now, how we know that these, the, for example, this cortex is motor cortex. Actually, neurologists did one thing. They made their concept that which how they made the concept that which part of this cortex is doing which function? How did they learn? There were two tools they could use. Number one, electrical stimulation. For example, if they stimulate electrically this point, let's suppose, and person start moving some part of the body, then they must they know it. This group of neurons are concerned with controlling motor control. But with electrode, if they stimulate this area, person start seeing the images. So it means it is concerned with visual system. If they stimulate this area with the electrode, person start hearing something. So it means this is concerned with the hearing. Of course, this visual area or hearing area is sensory. Or this, by electrode, they stimulate this area. Person says, there is someone touching my hand. It means this is having sensory area. Touch, pain, temperature comes here. Is that right? So in this way, this was one tool that how they could determine which part of the cerebral cortex is doing what function. By electrical stimulation, they see what really happens. Number two, they also learned about the function of cerebral cortex by the destructive lesions that some area is destroyed in the cerebral cortex and see what happened to the patient. Right? In lower animals, they could produce the destructive lesions themselves or in human beings, sometimes people come with infarction or people come with the tumors or people come with... Uh, infections, abscesses, and some part of cerebral cortex is destroyed and from there they could infer that what function has been lost after the destruction of the piece of a cerebral cortex, area of cerebral cortex, they studied the person and found which neurological deficit is there. For example, when they discovered, particularly when this area is damaged, person cannot move his foot, is that right, and lower limb. So they knew the neurons in this area are concerned with the control of the lower limb. Is that right? So there were two tools by which they learned about the activity in cerebral cortex. Number one was by electrical stimulation through electrodes to different areas of the right. And number two by, what was the second mechanism? By looking for neurological deficits which are produced by destructive lesions. Am I clear? Now. Let's see what was they they came to know with different experiments that motor motor area areas in cerebral cortex are anterior to central sulcus. Now this area exactly, which is immediately anterior to that, right? This area, this is called what is this called? Yes, please. Precentral gyrus. This is precentral gyrus, and of course here is superior frontal gyrus, middle frontal gyrus, superior frontal gyrus, yes, middle, frontal, gyrus, and inferior frontal gyrus. Am I right? Now, actually, with different experiments, they came to know that there are three different areas of the cortex which control the motor system. Let me tell you, what are those three separate areas? Now, of course, it has to be like this. And your nose is somewhere here. Now, actually, this area, 
which is precentral gyrus right and some area which turns on the medial side of that you know which is going to the medial side of that you move your finger from lower to upper area what is this precentral gyrus and you go on the top and then move medially on that right all this area is called primary motor cortex what is this area called primary i will explain what is its function primary motor cortex right so what is primary motor cortex it is the precentral gyrus right present on the suprolateral surface in front of the central sulcus and its extension medially is that right on the cerebral hemisphere this is primary motor cortex then they came to know that in front of that yes they are having areas which is called pre motor area this is primary motor area right this red area is primary motor area but this is pre motor area is that right pre motor area and then they discovered another area here and this is also going to the medial side of that they called it supplementary motor area supply mentary motor area now you have three motor areas there is primary motor cortex pre motor cortex and supplementary motor cortex just knowing that is not a good concept you must know how they are different from each other because as you are growing as doctor one day you will learn someone has a damage here what will happen to him if someone has a damage here what will happen to him and so on and so forth so let's talk about what is the difference in their activity actually pre motor area plans the motor activity it makes a motor program let me tell you something let's suppose i'm standing here or you are sitting in a party and there's lot some coffee cups there now you are planning that you should take one cup of coffee and bring to your own lips is that right now it involves some motor planning by the central nervous system you had only thought in your mind you have an idea that you want to drink the coffee right with that first of all now look listen carefully if coffee is here my motor plan will be different i will go take it and bring it here but if coffee is there the motor plan plan is going to be same or different different because to taking a thing from here i have to make different movement or if coffee is there then i have to walk and then bring it from there right if coffee is someone at a very high table then movement is like this now i had just idea that i will take the coffee right now what has to how the motor system will work motor system will work by this first of all idea will be transferred to the pre motor area pre motor area will plan it will plan that how to generate the programs so that coffee can be brought to you now listen carefully if you are standing like this now again listen coffee cup is here if you are standing like this motor movement should be from here to here but if you are scratching your head and then you suddenly think coffee should come the motor movement should come down and like this so it means that just to take the coffee cup from here your initial position of the hand is important central nervous system first of all should know what is the initial position of the hand then it should determine what should be the final position of the hand then central nervous system should compute the difference and then execute a program how initial position can be brought to the up to the cup am i clear again listen let's suppose that i want to take a cup of coffee and which is present exactly in front of me but if initial position of my hand is by my side i have to initiate this program and bring it like this but if initial position of hand is i'm standing like this then i have to come like this and then bring it it means that your pre motor area which make the programs before they really do some activity they should have update information where are different parts of my body 
Are you clear what I am talking about? It means all the proprioceptive information should be collected to this area as well. Is that right? Now what really happens? There is cerebellum. You know lot of information from the muscles and joints is constantly going to the cerebellum, spinal cerebellar tract. Cerebellum are all the time updated, all the time updated with all our body positions and tendons, tension and muscles tensions and everything. Is that right? It means cerebellum has a body image all the time. And when you change your body position, cerebellum is immediately updated. Let me tell you how. With my closed eye, let's suppose this is my finger. Now I cannot see my finger, but my central nervous system know how. Because from all, all this area, information is going to the cerebellum and even up to the cerebrum, right? Now, if you order me that I should take the other index finger to this finger, I will bring it like this, right? I missed it, then I collected it. Now what really happened? I, let me tell you how the motor system worked. First of all, motor system should have all the information up, initial position of this. Then motor system should also know, central nervous system should also know the initial position of this. Then central nervous system should have an image, what it wants to do, what should be the final position of both. Right? Uh, from initial position and final position, it determine which is a suitable program. Then it will execute this through the descending pathway. It will give orders that different muscles should be contacted with this velocity and speed and tension. So I started moving like this. Then it overshoot. Now proprioception from here and proprioception from here told to the cerebellum that you wanted this final position but final position which is made is slightly different. The system corrected itself. You get it? How the whole system in a collaboration work? Another idea. Come here. Right? Yes, you just, okay, we'll shake hand later. <laughs> uh, right, now look, close your eyes. Right. Don't be so obedient. Just close your eyes, not hand. Okay. Now with this finger, with this finger, touch your own nose. Right. Actually, central nervous system knew where is his nose. And central nervous system knew where is his finger. And then they made, initial position is this. Final position should be that and they executed it. Is that right? Now, close your eyes. Touch my nose. Yeah, why? Because the central nervous system does not know the position of my nose. You get me? So, the, the, by this experiment, I am trying to give a concept to you that your central nervous system is constantly updated about, please come again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Close your eyes and put this finger yeah. With other index finger, leave it. Uh, yeah. Rapidly touch this finger. Rapidly. You know, he corrected a little bit. Yeah. What happened? Listen. You keep this finger here, this finger here. Proprioception coming from here, from here, and from here going to the central nervous system through the ascending tract to cerebellum and cerebrum. They know the position of both areas. Then when I said him that this finger should be moved and brought here, he has to make that movement. If I say this finger should go there, then he has to execute a different program, right? So what happened? Central nervous system should know the initial image of, initial image. Then you should command, give a thought that what, what should be the final image. Then central nervous system will make programs and execute the movement. While movement is going on, for example, move that finger. When the movement is going on, very rapidly, Central nervous system is being updated. The movement is right or wrong. Should it be corrected or should not be corrected until final position. If initial and final matches, central nervous system does not make further. If there is mismatch, then it will make what? Corrections. Is that right? Okay, come here. One more point. Yeah. Now, what has to happen? All this movement, first information should flow through sending tracks upward. It should go to cerebellum where proprioception is unconscious and to the cerebrum where it is at conscious level. We have discussed in detail in the last lectures how it happens. Then when he plans the movement, actually motor planning area immediately consult with the cerebellum 
what is the position and they are concerned with the sensory cerebral area after that they acquire the initial position is that right then they compute the final position then they will give orders to different pathways which muscles should be moved and activated right with which speed and with which degree of contraction so that movement can be executed of course when information is coming down it is coming down through descending tracks is that right another important thing which I want to tell you that when you are making any movement usually you need some background posture right and background tone in some other muscles also for example if I ask him that kick the football make a kick movement actually mentally he just moved this area but actually if he concentrate uh, the tone in hip area and spine area that also changed it means you are concentrating only to move your leg but actually central nervous system computed the whole system and it knew the tension in the hip and in the spine should also be muscles of the spine should be changed so that this movement can be properly executed is that right another example if you are writing try to write something yes try to write something anything now when you are writing is that right give her a pencil so that she really experience this thing right try to write something write your name or something when you are doing it actually you are moving only hand but we concentrate tension here also changes here also changes do it again is that right because this area and this area is trying to stabilize the hand so this was voluntary movement but automatically background adjustments are made you are getting it it means they have to be one descending system or multiple systems they have to be multiple systems is that right so before I go into that I will continue discussion here first right you have taken my markers naughty boy no they are here okay now listen premotor area plans the movement what it is doing it is planning the movement is that right and this plan the movement of the limbs is that right it plans the movement of the limbs and other fine movements like when you talk right or when you are doing phonations supplementary motor area is concerned with very primitive movements that is also making motor program but pre-motor programming is different and supplementary motor area programming is different supplementary motor area plans very primitive movement what are the prim primitive movement when human beings are not writing and going for step one when they were living in jungles caveman or even more lower animal what were the most primitive movement look at the lower animal the trunk later on you develop the advanced limbs and then you took four limbs off so that you can walk on two limbs and do extra things with the upper limbs but actually initial movements were these movements and hip movements is the most primitive movement these are basically planned in where supplementary motor area and usually they are planned bilateral when you stimulate supplementary motor area some axial muscles move and they bilaterally move is that right or hips move bilaterally move and you know what are the primitive movements of the hips right you can initiate them by stimulating here is that right these are relatively more advanced movements planning here 